All right, so as we left off on the last video, you seen we had two different tanks and I've added a third tank just for the simplicity of saving you time and saving you effort. You've seen exactly what we did as far as you know adding stuff and, and the way you would add the graphics. Now, what I wanna do here is explain the process. Now, if you have experience in food and beverage, you would understand that making soda or anything for that matter, like Coca-Cola, Pepsi, or any kind of, of the high brands, you would know they have a master batch, right? The master batch comes from a corporate office and generally is not that is proprietary it's not shared that information is locked away and is not something that can get out if it did obviously anybody could make coca cola and pepsi in that front and and it wouldn't actually be a product that we actually buy right it would be something that uh, uh it could anybody could make all across the shelf it matter of fact you could google it right now and see that but in this instance um you know, just from my history of working with the soda industry and none of this information I'm sharing with you is proprietary. It is all common knowledge. There is a master batch from Coca-Cola, Pepsi and all the major brands. Now, this is the first tank. The second tank is our um, fructose corn syrup, right? So that's generally in the U.S. what we use to actually, you know, mix the sugar or the sugar element inside of the actual product, right? So. But they do a premix, and this premix in the mixer has three major components. It has caffeine, so I've added a caffeine uh, tank. We have caffeine, we have the master batch, and then we have the fructose corn syrup. So these three components are what's going to make up the core batch, right? This is the core batch that we're batching up here, and it's going to go into our finished product. That finished product would then, in turn, go to a filler where they add the other components like the um, calf or not the caffeine but the carbonation and the water so they add a little bit of water to it and they carbonate it right there at the actual filler so that they get the the best product they possibly can that's kind of the way they get the freshest product right so their goal is to have the freshest product go into the actual uh, can or bottle in that instance so I just wanted to give you a real world example of why we're making the batch the way we currently are so hopefully that gives you a, a solid understanding. Like I said, I didn't want to actually bore you with, uh, you know, you know, adjusting these tanks or moving these tanks and stuff like that. I wanted to actually come in and, and just basically give you a, you know, we, we, we've built it out. We've seen how to build it out. We've seen how to structure it. We've seen how to use some of the navigations and stuff up here. Now, all we did was basically copy one of these tanks, put it over here, copy the stuff over here, put it over here. Now, I did not put a pump for the caffeine because generally they have the caffeine pretty high or something like that, and it would just gravity feed in. It is actually monitored by a micro motion meter. So in that, that case, we're actually going to show indicators on this, right? So we're gonna, we're gonna come back and put our indicators on this screen. But first, what we wanna do is go ahead and start doing some of the programming as well. But um, before we get into that, let's go ahead and add a, another couple elements. We're gonna do a draw, we're gonna do a text, and then we're gonna come in here and call this, <clears throat> we'll call this AV01. So AV slash 01. And this is gonna give us the indication of what it is, right? So we can bold that if we want to. Um, I kinda like it where it's not bold. Um, obviously, maybe even like a smaller font. Um, maybe like a nine, so you can kind of get all your elements in there. Now, once I get that done, right? Once I get the first one done, I'm gonna place it where I want it, and then copy it. And well, I copied the wrong thing, so let's make sure you grab the right thing. I'm doing Control C, or you can just come up here to copy, and then paste, right? And then as we paste it, we're gonna come over here and throw that over here. We're gonna align these two up so that we get the proper alignment. Again, alignment is always critical. Now we're gonna call this AVO2, okay? So now we can understand that there's AVO1, there's AVO2, and now we're coming in and kind of giving our elements of interaction. So I'm gonna basically come in and kind of give a schematic about where what things are like if you're if the person is looking on the screen say it's a maintenance technician or if it's an operator they can tell you hey avo1 did not open or avo2 is open or avo2 you know whatever the case may be faulted out for that matter right so what we're doing here is basically giving a indicator about what's what right 
So we're, we're telling it what tank it is, what valve it is. And now we're going to copy that again. We're going to control C just because it's easier and control C. And then we're going to come out here and put this down here. And this would be our AVO. Well, actually let's come in here and, and let's put them in here. Um, let's just put all of them in here right now. So this would be another, and then we'll have one more. And depending upon where you're, you're copying and pasting from, that's where it's, it's going to end up. All right. So then we have another one. And then this will give, let's see, kind of looks a little clearer over here. So you don't want to collect, like, stack things on top of each other. So we, we definitely want to give a good indication of what's what. So this would be AVO1, AVO2. So this would be, this would be three. And we're just going to give it a base indicator so that we have a, a um, some kind of a representation in the program when we start programming this stuff, right? So this is four. We'll call this uh, five. And then we'll call this six. And then this will be seven. Okay, so now we've added the highlights of you know, calling our, our control valves in this in case AVO1, AVO2, AVO3, all the way up to AVO7. We can do the same thing for our pumps too. So we can copy this, being that we have the font and everything, the sizing properly, we can copy and paste again. I'm a big fan of that because again, it does give you the prime indicator of, you know, keeping things looking really good. Now we'll change the, the font here. We'll call this pump one. Right, and then just to keep it really, really, really simple, pump one, we'll copy that and paste that again. So control C, control V, and then this one over here would be pump three. So we have three pumps. So this would be pump three. We'll change the writing. Pump two right here. This would be pump three right here. And we'll change the writing. So now we have that. So now we have our pumps. We have indicators telling us what's what. And we do have a solid layout about what's what. You know, as far as understanding, you know, okay, so now we can come in here and say, okay, so on the uh, caffeine tank, if we want to turn the AVO5 on, we can control that basically through the program and do that just that simple, right? Same thing with the pump. Same thing with AVO1. So obviously you would want to cut on AVO1 before you cut on the pump. And then as you cut on the pump, based upon your flow, you would cut on AVO3. Now we're doing this indicators right here just to show you simple little small steps to show you how things are done with the HMI. Now again, some of this stuff is really, really common knowledge. Some of this stuff is really easy to do, but making it look and, and be presentable is really where the key thing is, right? Being professional with what you do is the key to it. Now, anybody can, you know, throw something together. And sometimes it's just a matter of like changing the font, right? Like changing this font right here, they have properties, come over here, change the font size, or even maybe not bold it, right? So if I don't bold it, you can see the, the difference in there. So this is the caffeine tank. Now, to me, it kind of stands out a little bit better if it's bold. So I like to keep it bold. Maybe I'll change the font or whatever the case may be. Maybe I'll change it down to a 10 um, for that matter. But it is indicator. You know, it, like if it's if I, if I think it's too big or if I think it's too bulky, then I'll come over here and change the font or I'll change the size, right? So this, I mean, that does kind of look a little bit better. So it really depends on how you would like to see it working. And uh, just, I mean, we all have the aesthetics, right? The aesthetics is probably the hardest thing to you know grasp. So this is why I say, okay, come in and do your first layout and then come back and do your aesthetics. Make sure that it looks good. Because like I say, anybody can come in here and program this or anybody can come in here and, and make this you know look good as far as, you know, like, maybe the or make a couple layouts and stuff like that but it's the small little details the small little things that you want like just changing the size making sure the lines are lined up where well, we did the the line line up right here just keeping that black line the same 
Uh, just the same thing, right? Just And making sure you do things properly, it really makes the difference, right? And even this, we can change the size of this if we wanted to, make make our pump bigger, or make our agitator bigger. So you see, we, we made our agitator right here. We actually thickened this line a little bit to make it, you know, that much more, I don't know, it just looks like a, a solid shaft, right? It looks like something that, it just fits better, right? Now this is giving you a base indicator. You could take as much time as you wanted to making this as professional as you wanted to, but again, the more professional you do, the more time it takes. And I, you know, for somebody to tell you that it's going to be really, really quick and easy. Now it, it, it is when you import and export, but when you're coming in here making, you know, screens from scratch, using elements from scratch, it does take a little bit of time. And I want you to be aware of that. So again, when it comes down to it, I just wanted to go over the process of what we were doing, what we were programming. So when we get into the control logic side of it or the, the Studio 5000 side of it, it's really easy to understand. So again, we are not done adding elements to this. Like we're going to have a batch time in here. We're going to have uh, we're going to have you know like readouts and stuff over here. So this screen is just the base layout, right? So we, we're still not done adding stuff to this. We're going to have a header we're going to build. We're going to have a footer we're going to build. We're going to build a couple different things in our HMI application. But I did want to go through this and show you a couple small little things and give you the justification of why we're doing what we're doing. So hopefully you gained a lot out of that and we'll see you guys on the next one.